Hey, hey, I need to get studying today and I thought I'd update you on my actuarial exam progress while I'm at it. There's been a lot of things changing lately, a lot going on with moving house, moving job, graduating, but the one thing that is staying constant in my life is studying. I can always rely on exams to be there and I'm sure a lot of you guys are in the same boat. And before we go any further, I do want to share a really useful tool that I've recently discovered and it's a game changer for online learning. SLID is the extension that all the students of this world need. It makes it really, really easy to take notes while watching videos when you're doing online learning, whether that be an online lecture or a Zoom class or even a YouTube video, any online video you want to take notes from and take screen grabs from. It allows you to take screenshots with timestamps with just a single click. In the past, when I've been watching tutorial videos or on live online classes, I found taking notes quite tedious because you have to pause the video, take a screen grab, open up your separate note app, paste in the screen grab, then write your text, then change window again. And it's all a bit clunky and then you can never find the part of the video you want to go back to when you're reviewing your notes. SLID removes all of these issues. You can also extract text from the screen grabs you take in SLID and it's time stamped so you can review the video easily while you were taking the notes. The extension automatically manages all of your separate notes and videos and keeps them safe so they're there when you need to review them. And your notes are also easily shareable by link with the original videos. So it just has every feature under the sun you would like. I've been using it for my actuarial study. This is one I'd really, really recommend trying out whether you're a student actuary, studying at uni or doing some other online learning for fun. I'll leave a link in the description if you would like to download the SLID extension. But yeah, the topic of this video is study, it is exams, because getting through these actuarial exams is my top priority at the moment. I've always been taking them seriously, but it's only recently that I am suddenly thinking, wow, if there's one thing I want to do in the next two years, it's pass all of my exams and qualify. And I think it's because when I was applying for jobs, I realised how much weight companies put on your exam passes. Whether it's right or not, a lot of companies care more about your qualification status than your work experience to date when you're in your early years of an actuarial career. One interviewer actually said to me, and I quote, the slate is wiped clean when you qualify. Nobody cares about what you did beforehand. They literally said, Paige, focus on your exams because that is what gets you somewhere in this industry. So I am doing just that. For those wondering about my recent results, I am still waiting to hear whether I've passed the exams I sat in September. I'm due to receive the results in early December, so I will let you guys know next month once I hear. Results day in December is just the Christmas gift that nobody really asked for. I've stopped thinking about it too much because there's nothing I can do now, and I'm just focusing on what is next, and that is what I'm gonna talk to you about today. It is Wednesday the 16th of November and this is my first study day in nearly two months. I've had a nice long break of not looking at my textbooks. I wouldn't say it's been a holiday, I have been busy, but I do feel refreshed and a little less repulsed by the idea of looking at course notes now. So I think I've reached a point where I'm happy to start studying again. I'm planning now on taking one study day per week going forwards obviously client work permitting, but hopefully Wednesdays can just be blocked out for study for the foreseeable future. First thing on the agenda is to complete the professional skills stage one course, which is set by the IFOA, the Institute of Faculty of Actuaries. It's a prerequisite for booking the CB3 exam, which is business management, which is an exam I am yet to attempt. I've still got five more to make an attempt at. And I've heard that CB3 gets booked up pretty quickly, so that's why I really want to get on this professional skills course as soon as possible. At this stage, I really don't know much about the course other than the fact that it's online and it can be completed in my own time. They estimate about half a day, but other people have told me they've got it done in a couple of hours, so... I don't know, we'll see how I go. I keep accidentally using this mug when I'm working from home and I have work calls and it says on it, I'd rather be in bed. And I'm just casually sat there taking my sips and someone at my old company actually picked up on it. But it was all right, because I knew them and we laughed it off. But I was sat in my new team's whole team weekly catch up. 
suddenly realizing I had that mug and I was like no this is not the mug I can be using in my first week at my new job I'd rather be in bed I'd rather be in bed it's not really giving enthusiastic new employee is it so I need to remember to reserve that mug for study days only when I probably would rather be in bed and cozy evenings you know anyway study This one's a trick question. They must follow the actress code, yes. Well, not everything they do. They must pay their membership fees on time. Ninety percent on the quiz at the end of module one. Look at me go. My question is, which one did I get wrong, though? Oh, it was a really subjective question. I'm already a quarter of the way through making smashing progress which is good because I've actually got to leave the house in less than an hour's time for you guessed it a rowing outing I was meaning to start it earlier in the day but I got invested in a piece of work this morning that I hadn't planned on doing but I just got into the zone with it I wanted to get it done so delayed start to this and maybe I was procrastinating the professional skills course just a teeny bit Module two, let's go. take a break because I've got a rowing outing this evening it is dark and it is wet out there so it's gonna be great fun but yeah a good break from learning about the disciplinary action that the IFOA has in place and actuary's code of conduct let's go pals cycling helmet at the ready 10 minute cycle for me I'm back it was all going so well until it started to pour with rain on the way back. I am gonna get some dry clothes on and eat some dinner and go from there. late and I'm feeling a lot more tired than I thought I would be by this time. It's not even 10 o'clock yet or actually it's just past 10 but still I'm feeling quite tired today. I think it's just catching up with me getting up early for a lot of days this week. So I'm going to try to wrap it up really soon but I just want to get the quiz finished for module two of the course because otherwise I'll forget everything that I've covered today and then I'll have to relearn it and that would be annoying. But the funny thing is, I've been watching one of the videos where they've got people pretending to do this disciplinary hearing and the actor of the person having the hearing looks so, so similar to the head of my team at work. Like, spitting image of them and I don't know if it's just me being silly or if it's actually them I've just been re-watching it like they just look so familiar I'm gonna have to ask them at work tomorrow if they featured in the IFOA video resources for the professional skills course me go a hundred percent i am actually gonna go to bed now though because i am tired so module three covers the actuary's code but i'm gonna leave that for page another day hey everyone it is another day it's a few days later it's now sunday and i am finally picking up the professional skills course again 
I did just let it drop for a few days. Work got busy, I had a welcome lunch, I was racing in London on the River Thames, but we're refocusing. I do wanna get this professional skills course done today so I can book on to my next exam. Before I continue though, I thought it would be a good point to discuss my study route through the actuarial exams because I don't think I've ever discussed my full study route, starting from no exam exemptions from the very start of the 13 exam syllabus right through to the end because there is choice there. If I wanted to take all 13 exams in one sitting, I could. I would fail probably majority of them, but I could if I wanted to. Actually, that's a lie because some of the exams would clash. There's an exam timetable and some of the exams go on at the same time. But still, you can take as many exams as you want, timetable permitting each sitting, and it's been my personal decision to take between one and three exams in each sitting. And yeah, let me talk through my study route and my thought process behind it. I had my first sitting in April 2021. Obviously, all of this was documented on this YouTube channel, and I sat CS1 and CB1. I've then had three sittings since then. Today I've sat four sittings in total, two sittings per year, and I will display on screen what I took in each of those sittings. As mentioned earlier, I'm still waiting on results from October 2022. So I don't know if I've passed CM2, CP2 and CP3, but I've sat them, I've attempted them. That leaves me with five exams to go, which you can see I have provisionally scheduled for April 2023, October 2023 and April 2024, at which point I would be done if I pass all of them. I know that all of these letters are not going to mean much to non-actuaries, but the full names of each of these subjects are on the IFOA website if you're interested. And the exams are divided into four categories, which are core principles, core practices, specialist principles, and specialist advanced. I decided on this study route by, I guess, setting myself a goal of when I want to be qualified by, which is... April 2024 or summer 2024 by the time I get results. That will be approaching four years after I started working as a student actuary. It is the ideal situation really where I pass all exams in the first sitting. It is tough to do that and it's very common to fail exams so it's not an easy target to set for myself but we're just going to aim high and adjust from there. Also I had to bear in mind that not all exams are equal. CP1 which I'm taking next sitting is a huge, huge subject. I'll just look up the recommended study hours because it's something crazy. So for CP1, it's 400 recommended study hours. I don't know where they expect you to fit that in around a full-time job. Whereas for CP3, which I took in the sitting just gone, which looks like a heavy sitting because I took three exams, actually the recommended study hours for CP3 were only 60. And the assessment format for all of the exams varies. So there's a real mix in there. Some people like to get the tough exams out of the way first. I did not take that approach. I wanted to ease myself in. So I chose the exams that I thought looked easiest for me based on what I'd studied at uni. CS1 was entry level statistics. I'd done statistics at sixth form and then a little bit at uni. So I thought, hey, I can probably handle that. I also looked at the pass rates. The pass rates are available online and honestly, they get really low for some of these exams. I'm just gonna look up the CP1 pass rate. I'm not sure if I want to know it, but... Okay, so in September 2021, the CP1 pass rate, which I'm taking next sitting, was 36%. So it's quite low. 64% of people sitting CP1 every sitting will fail, so... I strategically chose exams with better looking pass rates for the early sittings just to actually get some exams under my belt. Also some of the exams build on content from other exams. CS2 is a follow on to CS1 so it makes sense to have sat CS1 before you sit CS2. I don't book onto any of these exams until a few months before I actually sit them so if I did change my mind and want to change the order I sit things or if I need to resit exams and don't want to study for a whole new one yet then I can it's really flexible also I should say that I've spoken to quite a few colleagues when I'm choosing exams to sit in the sitting just gone I had initially just booked onto CM2 and CP2 and it wasn't until I spoke to a colleague who encouraged me to sit CP3 that I actually booked onto CP3 too quite last minute 
whether that was a good idea and whether that was good advice from my colleague remains to be seen when results day comes but i've attempted it anyway that is my study route summarized it's just nice to have a plan of what i'm working towards because when it's so many exams it can just feel like they'll never end sometimes you get one set done and then it's just on to the next and they just keep going and going and going for what feels like forever so to know i've got that summer 2024 endpoint in my head i don't want to take too long qualifying i'm just so ready to be done with exams now i do like my study day though i can't imagine life without having a study day once per week maybe i don't want to get through exams so quickly <laughs> Hey peeps, we are on to the test your knowledge quiz for the actuaries code module, module three. 10 questions, let's go. Question one. I think I need a copy of the actuaries code open for this, just as a reference. On to question two. Okay, people, I don't know if you can see there, but it says my progress status complete. I have completed the professional skills course stage one. I have just tried to go and book my CB3 business management exam, which I should be eligible to book now that I've completed the course, but I've got to wait a few days until confirmation comes through. I was jumping the gun a little bit, just too keen to get the exam booked, but there's now two dates available to book so i think i should be okay to wait a few more days and be sure that both of them won't fill up in that time i'm gonna end this video here a little teaser of the studying that's gonna come for this sitting i really do need to get into the swing of it in the next few weeks and actually open up my course notes for cp1 i'll keep you guys in the loop keep you guys updated thanks for watching please give the video a like if you enjoyed it subscribe to my channel, follow my Instagram, subscribe to my newsletter for more regular updates as well via email. Give me a follow on LinkedIn if that's your platform of choice. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.